Christina Lopez, Fox 26 News reporter, and we are speaking to an expert about how you can protect yourself against identity theft. And we have plenty of people in the Valley who have experienced identity theft in the past. And there are steps you can take to really protect yourself and ensure your privacy. And one of those experts we are speaking with right now is Michael Bremer. He is the VP and head of Experian Global Data Breach Resolution. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Glad to be with you. Can you describe in more detail uh, the massive data breach that uh, happened with AT&T that impacted millions of customers, some of them right here in the Valley? Well, the AT&T incident, as was reported by the papers, uh, impacted a lot of people that had information either containing text, history, as well as uh, some account information and maybe potentially payment information. Uh, so it impacted uh, many millions of people. Uh, it was pretty widespread. And at the same time, also uh, communication was sent out by AT&T in the form of email and letters to notify people that they possibly not only could be affected, but more importantly, how they could protect themselves. And um, is this something that is really common in this day and age? How, how is this happening with sophisticated technology that we have at our fingertips? Data breaches are happening all the time. Fortunately, about 90% of them have a root cause in human error. Someone putting a non-production server into production, clicking on a link, losing their administrative credentials, and so, this is uh, all too common. The other thing about breaches nowadays is that even if there is a security incident, people need to be aware um, of that incident and then take immediate action if they get a notification. And who exactly is at risk of identity theft? I mean, is this across the board, anyone can be a victim to identity theft? Is it the elderly population? Who uh, is really most at risk? for these types of um, identity thefts? Anybody that has a social security number or a passport number, name, address, we all have what is known as personal identity information. Even children have that. Um, but you asked about who's most at risk. Both children whose accounts or credit histories may not be monitored as closely and people aren't paying attention to that. Same thing with senior citizens because they're also trusting, they're online more often, and they may uh, also be impacted more greatly because you have to understand that the breach happened. You have to go ahead and take quick action and you have to have multiple layers of protection. You do take the recommended actions either from the notice of the data breach or just as general identity hygiene. I love that identity hygiene. I think this is something that most people aren't aware of. This is probably an area where most people need to be educated on, right? And so um, the fact that you even said it that way, I think really does help us to better understand how we can uh, better protect ourselves and really who is the most vulnerable, the elderly and young children, of course. Um, what are some ways or some areas that people can really stay protected if they fall prey to identity theft? Well, some of the common ones are, are pretty easy. Um, with your internet service provider, um, they offer free encryption for your emails as well as potentially a virtual private network. Um, don't click on any links, whether it's text or email. Don't answer any phone calls from people that you're not suspecting a phone call from because it only takes about 10 seconds. And in fact, you could have your voice uh, copied and a voice print made to do a deep fake later on, and then limit your use of social media. I think it's really important nowadays to, to keep any information like driver's license, passport number, location you're on vacation out of social media so people don't have prying eyes on what you're doing. So many good tips there, Michael. Thank you so much for joining us today and really shedding a light on this. Uh, identity theft is something that is all too common. There are steps that people can take to really um, 
eliminate that in their life. And I think that we've just learned so much just from this conversation alone. One last point I do want to ask, our last question, uh, passwords. Should people be um, updating their passwords? And if so, how frequently should they be doing that? They, one of the really important tips I also make is use a password manager. So a password manager allows you to store passwords in a secure location, only having to remember one password to get in. It will also auto generate long and complex passwords so that you are secure on those sites. I also recommend as most of the notifications do to change your password with the accounts that were associated with the security notice or breach, just as a general rule and try to update all your passwords anyway once a year at a minimum. Very good and helpful tips there. Michael, thank you again so much for your expertise and uh, really for educating us today on better ways to stay protected so we do not fall victim to identity theft. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Christina.